Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to show you the team order and strategy I use to do the Galvania Epic Trials. Three times nicer for this to boost up the power of your team if you have those medals. Helps out a little bit, but let's take a look at the team we are up against and the team order. I've changed the team order around a little bit. We are up against an all undead team over here. They are all undead, and that means Van Kane is very useful in the first place. Deal double skull damage versus undead, as well as 50% chance to ignore armor with skull damage. So that is pretty decent on its own. Um, his spell is okay as well. If he survives, he's quite handy later on in the game because that spell where you also get to do the curse and silence chance is pretty useful on silencing the bat. Because the bat isn't a threat at first. It uses blue and red. Wraith uses blue. Flaming Skeleton uses red. So... Basically, they're mana blocking Crimson Bat for the first portion of the fight until these two are gone. Bat is not so much of a problem. That's when we can cast Van Kane on Bat and maybe get that silence to activate and stop Crimson Bat having any funny ideas about casting. Now, the only thing with Van Kane up top is he has no extra life. Like Flesh Golem does give itself extra life, so it's a natural thought sometimes to have this up top. Um, if you're unlucky with skull hits, you can lose Van Kane quite early up top, but it's kind of the way the game rolls, you have to take the rough with the smooth. Um, and we are going to gain attack when we cast Dark Priestess. We'll cast this on the top troop, Van Kane. Obviously this big increase in, in attack can really benefit Van Kane if those skulls connect. But bear in mind, when you cast her, she's a little bit of a madwoman. And those skulls can completely miss at the same time, even if there's plenty on the board, and set up the opposition. And she does give the person you, you, you cast it on, in this case Van Kane, a barrier. But sometimes the enemy can get two, three skull hits in a row after that. So you just got to take the rough with the smooth when you cast the Dark Priestess. Sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. But don't fret if it goes wrong. Um, if he gets conked out, then Flesh Golem is a decent... Troop in second place, explodes row gaining mana, gains life. It's a similar amount of life that it gains to what Dark Priestess takes when she casts. So basically, if you cast Dark Priestess and Flesh Golem at roughly a one-to-one -one ratio, whatever she takes in life, you'll get back when you cast Flesh Golem, and you still get that increase in attack when you cast it on, on them. So whichever way round you have these two, there are pros and cons to both. I've been doing it so far with Van Kane up top and it's been working pretty well. We can use the Flesh Horror later on in the battle, eliminating all armor from an enemy. That's going to be used on probably the one of the bottom two troops and then deal damage to them and all enemies below. And it does gain two to a random skill when its turn begins. All right, let's go for it then and see what we can do. This is one of those fights where even if you're down to your last couple of troops, your last troop, it doesn't matter as long as you get it done. The nature of this game means it can be a bit of a bloodbath because she's just a mad woman, this dark priestess, honestly. When you cast her, it is just down to, to luck. It doesn't matter if there's two skulls, 12 skulls on the board when you cast this. She can sometimes completely make a mess of it. On another day, you can cast her. Van Kane will get a four match. That 50% chance to ignore skull damage will come in at the same time and you'll start wrecking through the opposition. On another cast... She'll miss completely with those skulls and he'll die because she'll set him up for two or three skulls. It's literally the way it goes, but um, no skill involved with the Dark Priestess at all. Completely down to pot of luck what happens when you cast her. So we'll take those normal skull hits for now. We got lucky on those first few. So here we go, we've got a few skulls on the board. I'm tempted to get this troop up first, though, by using red. Oh, didn't see it. I was setting them up for a skull hit there, but we'll take that instead. And got lucky with that armor-piercing thing as well. So it's been pretty lucky for me so far. But let's go for it with, with her. Let's see what we can do. There we go. We sort of traded blows, but the, the barrier saves you from the first one. But if the game went wrong for you and basically it set them up for a four match, you've got a couple of hits and... You lost your top troop straight away. Don't panic too much because this one in second place is a pretty good backup because it gains life whenever you cast it as well as gain mana. So whatever she takes from him when he casts that on that troop now, 
he gains back whenever you cast. So providing you cast your Flesh Golem at roughly a one-to-one -one ratio with Dark Priestess, you won't actually really lose any life. And you're still, you're still relying on the luck when you cast Dark Priestess, so yeah. Got to just cast and see what happens sometimes. This is going to give us some of our colours I need, we need. Let's see if we can silence that back. This is about to cast. We did get it silenced. Happy days. Now let's see if we can get the mad woman up again. Yeah, yeah, you do that. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oops. Getting the skull hit then, which they ignored. That was funny. And it's cost him dearly. Oh, and it cost him dearly. <laughs> Took a skull hit and they gave him a skull hit. Nothing skill based about that. That's literally what the game decided to do. Right, let's get our screamy woman up. Come on. Got an increased attack now on our second troop down. They're nearly gone. It's a bit of a shame we don't want to cast that really, it's a bit of a waste. Let's cast that on them. Get the bat weakened up. None of our colours really, so we'll gain some extra life and do a bit more damage. That was a nice skull hit, thank you very much. We've got barrier, but I'm going to rather hit with that first. Because we have got a barrier still. I mean, you can cast this on a, on a different troop. You can, I mean, 139 is only, what, two hits away from killing the Crimson Bat. So we could cast this actually on the second troop down. Give them a barrier as well, just in case they get to, to cast their bat. In fact, I might do that, but I don't like the fact there's not that many skulls there. The likelihood is we will set the enemy up. But at the same time, there's no point collecting mana because this troop is not a lot of cop anymore. Doesn't do a lot. Let's go for it, but let's cast it on them. There we go. We did give them a skull hit and it didn't actually give us anything back. That was the danger of that tactic let's oh i was going to say let's see if we drop a skull but we dropped one <laughs> for them which they didn't take again so yeah kind of a weird epic trial this one it's kind of what kind of mood the dark priestess is in when she casts can go wrong quickly can go well quickly just take what happens sometimes and just do what you can but there it is there's the video if you enjoyed it found it useful helpful any of that kind of thing be really cool if you bash that like and subscribe button it really does help but most of all thanks for watching i'll catch you again next time bye for now